Namaskar. Hello and welcome to P Guru's channel. I'm your host Sri Ayer. A lot of developments coming out in Maldives and an involvement of a Maldivian terrorist. That's the only way I can describe this per person's role in the 26/11/2008 bombing and killing of several Hindus, innocent Hindus in Mumbai. There is a connect here. There's a guy called Mohammed Zilian, and who is this person? How does he connect? What did he do? All this and more in today's episode on Maldives. Let's welcome our guest, Savio Rodriguez of the Goa Chronicle. Savio, Namaskar. How are you? I'm very good. Shri, how are you? I'm doing well, Savio. And and thank you so much for a beautiful article that you have put out on Goa Chronicle today. We'll give you the link, viewers, in our uh, description section if you want to read the whole story. But more or less, we are going to cover it in this video with a few more angles, of course. So we will be able to give you that, and you can read that at leisure. So, Savio, take it away. When did this start? You know, so uh, Shri, we were investigating the role of Maldive terror operatives in India. And as you would know, over the last couple of weeks, we've been putting out information of the radicalism that's happening in Maldives about an NGO, that's Yamiyat Salaf, about the questionable links of the current president of Maldives, Dr. Mohammed Muizu, to the Jamaat Salaf. And in that investigation, we started going into deep into the role of terror modules of Maldives operating in India. And that's when we started to trace back where all uh, terror operatives were involved in arrests that happened in India. And then we started to look at different other intelligent reports that were available, not only in India, but out of India as well. And that's when we came across something very interesting from our source in the Maldivian uh, intelligence itself. And you know, we 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 spoke with them, and we realized that is something really, really that we missed out. In fact, a lot of intelligence agencies missed out as far as the 2611 terror attack in Mumbai was concerned. Now, what is this? Now, to the world and to all intelligence agencies, the main face of the reconnaissance that happened that led to the terror attacks in Mumbai was a man called David Headley. However, he was not the only reconnaissance man. There was one more man, or rather a youth from Maldives, whose name is Mohammed Zilian. Now, let me give you some details as we have put out in, in the story. Mohammed Zilian was commissioned by the Lashkare Toiba. He's a Maldivian. His national identity number is A071311. And he was commissioned to visit India, undertake a reconnaissance in India, in particular Mumbai and Bangalore, and provide to the terror outfit, in this case Lashkar e Toiba, videos, photographs, and observations of places of interest. Mahmud Zilian is the son of Ahmad Ibrahim who went to Yemen via Colombo with the assistance of his family after he was suspected of being a part of the uprising in Maldives in 2005. His name even appeared on the wanted list of the Maldives police. In Yemen, he met with the lashkar e -Toyba representatives on terror operatives and left for Pakistan with them. He was trained by LET in Pakistan. He agreed to work as a paid agent for them, and his first assignment was to travel to India and provide places of interest to LET, for which he was provided with a mini pocket camera and money to travel with. Now, Zillian or Zillian visited several locations in Mumbai as he was instructed by LET. He took pictures and observed these locations, which included the Taj Hotel, the Trident Hotel hospitals around the area, railway stations, the Nariman house, and some offices of foreign delegates as well as shopping complexes. His photos and observations were reported to the lashkar e -Toyba. His photographs were used, just like David Headley's was, that David Headley's photographs and video uh, were used 
to plan the terrorist attack on several locations in Mumbai. Now, why is Zillian not being called or questioned? Is because Zillian's father and had several friends at different levels of society in India and was fluent in some languages like Hindi, Malayalam, Tamil, and Gujarati. Mohammed Zillian spent years studying in, in, in India. He was studying in Bangalore, to be more specific. Now, Mohammed Zillian's relative is a powerful politician of the Maldivian government at that point of time. Now, how, how do we accept this to be the truth? Because none other than the former pro president of Maldives, Mohammed Nasheed, in an interview with an Indian media house, when questioned about a question by a female journalist on the rise of Islamic radicalism in Maldives, Nasheed said, "Yes, we have a serious issue with Islamist Islamic radicals. We know that many are being trained by Al Qaeda in the northern reaches of Pakistan." Several Maldivians have been arrested by Pakistani authorities after they crossed into Pakistan from India. The recruitment of Islamic radicals takes place in the Maldives and their channel of movement is up to Pakistan. They are getting trained there by Al-Qaeda to fight the war in Afghanistan. I believe that the identity of all the dead terrorists in Mumbai attacks had not been broken down into nationalities. I feel there is a Maldivian connection to the Mumbai attacks, and we have information from the family of the terrorists who are still in Maldives about this. He himself, in 2013, admits that there is a Maldivian hand to the Mumbai terror attacks. Mohammed Zilian was the second reconnaissance man who provided the photographs, the videos, the observations of the terror targets that LET had taken or mapped. Now, what you got to understand in in the in the uh, the uh, timelines of Lashkar -e Toiba operations in Pakistan, there was a time in 2010 where lashkar e toiba was actually moving most of its operations to Maldives. That is why in 2007, if you go back, you will find that there was the Male Sultan Park attack. But one of the people who was a part of that attack was caught in India, in Kerala. And when he was questioned, he started to reveal how lashkar e toiba was moving its operations to Maldives. Now, obviously, at that point of time, the heat in Pakistan was very high because of the terror attack that happened in India. So they were looking at alternate places where they are illegal, their terror activities could further. Around the same time, you also had the problems happening in Syria and Afghanistan. And that is where radicalism in Maldives went higher and higher and it got patronage from the very people that were in a, in the government at that point of time and they are getting patronage in the government even now i repeat as i did in the article ibrahim mohammed is the brother of sheikh abdullah bin mohammed sheikh abdullah bin mohammed is the president of Jamayat Salaf and both the brothers, both of them are brother, brothers of the first lady and the wife of the current president of Maldives, that's Dr. Mohammed Muizu. As you would know in our last discussion, I continue to ask him the questions because he has denied his links with the radical organization. Now, what is the threat to India that I keep repeating? Mohammed Shah Nawaz, who was caught in the last week of September, educated mining engineer, he was given the responsibility of making the IED 
bombs, the the ID uh, explosives. Then you had Mohammad Rizwan Ashraf, again another educated engineer. And then you had Ashur Varsi, who was pursuing his PhD at Jamia Islamia Uni University. All three of them were tracked down. And what were their targets? Akshadam Temple in New Delhi, Ayodhya, and the Chabad House in Mumbai. These are information that have come out from the Delhi special cell. This is information that only one media before us carried that bit of it. But we have gone back to the roots. The roots of terrorism go back way back till the terror bomb blast in terror attack in India, in Mumbai, one of the most dastardly, one of the most cowardly acts that have ever been done to any nation. And it has got a Maldivian hand. I think I want Maldivians to really think long and hard. Many of you come to, you know, uh, to India for medical purposes. You know, you have ailments that cannot be treated in Maldives. You come to India. Now, with so much, you know, alienation being attempted at India, what happens if India says, well, we'll have to do much more uh, tougher screening of all those people seeking treatment? Because we know that those who used to come from Pakistan used to come on a missive from ISI. They had a, uh, they would have a person who would be a family member to assist. And that person used to have his own things to do during the day. This is a new, known fact. Even under the Modi government, this was happening. So if something like that, a clampdown happens to Maldivian people seeking treatment in India, where are you going to go? China? Well, you may have a lung ailment that might even get solved. But you will return minus a kidney. If you sure, want to problem, do that, the problem, Shri, is you see, I'm I'm saying it out of utmost concern because you know what I do in terms of tracking intelligence. Uh, is uh, you know terror outfits work with intelligence agencies to try and find out where these terror operatives operate from, and I can tell you that there is an imminent threat from Maldivian ISIS operatives, Al-Qaeda operatives, and the lashkar e -Toyba as far as India is concerned. Of course, our intelligence agencies are very good at what they are doing. But it's now. These roots have been sown as early as 1990, if you actually go deep into history. Everybody is looking at Pakistan, and I, I, I say we must continue to look at it. But Maldives is as big a terror threat as Pakistan. Thank you, sir. And uh, we have a few more things that we would like to touch upon. But more important uh, thing that brings up is Maldivians are already absorbed in Indian society. India is a 1.4 billion population. If you start, you know, suspecting each and every one, then the amount of time it's going to take is going to be huge. So what happens is then there will be a blanket ban of sorts. I'm hoping that something like that won't happen. This India out is a very, very, uh, you know, you're really cutting your nose off. That's all I can say to the Maldives government. I hope some sanity prevails. And, and, and look, China doesn't have money. They really don't have money. They don't have money to feed their own population. Watch some of the videos that are there on social, uh, social media, on YouTube. Watch General uh, uh, Ravi Shankar's videos, Gen General Rajiv Narayanan's videos. You will understand the reality of what is happening in China, if you don't want to believe me. There's Jennifer saying inconvenient truths. Watch that. You are, you are going to somebody who's actually sinking. And, and you no, already... No, no. Sure. Go ahead. Personally, personally, I think if the Maldivians want to get into bed with the Chinese, I'm all right with that, and that's their problem. Now, what is important for us is please understand, in the recent arrests that were done in, in late September, all these boys, these three boys that were, or three men that were arrested, again, were educated people who were studying in India, who did their, who did their, who did their education in India. Now, if you look at even uh, Zilian, Zilian did his studies in Bangalore, right? 
So you have a lot of pe our people, our Indian people as well, who are getting associated with ISIS operatives, who are getting associated with Al Qaeda operatives, who are getting associated with the the Lashkar e Toiba, with many of these these terror sympathizer, terror operatives outfits. Now, Bahamut Shanavas is a classic example in recent case where he was. He was on a on a messaging channel that was Telegram. He got onto a, a, a room or, or a chat which was called the Cage Parrot. And that's how he met the Maldivian operatives. A lady. This lady and her brother started to first tell him about the, the atrocities that the, the Muslims are facing on the Syria-Iraq border. And after that, after he donated one lakh in the first tranche, and 40,000 in the second tranche, more discussions happened, more chats happened, and that's where the indoctrination happened. Now, assuming the intelligence and the Delhi special cell did not do this, this, this uh, uh, raids, they were actually there waiting for over a month to two, keeping an eye on, on Mahmoud Shahnavaz. And that is how they got to the depth of it, because when they caught them, they actually had components for the IED devices, which means their targets, which was Akshadam, Ayodhya, Chabad House in Mumbai, were genuine targets that they were looking at. And they were planning to do that at the end of last year during the festivals. So you have a serious, serious issue going on. And I'm sure the intelligence are alert about it. But the intelligence or the authorities at that point of time did not pay attention to the Maldivian connect as far as the bomb, the terror attack in Mumbai was concerned. Um, thank you so much, Savio. We have a few questions from our viewers. Uh, maybe we can take a few. Can you have the questions, please? First one, Magnet Ranga wants to know, Jay Sri Ram, one can't but doubt if full investigations have been done on this attack, or is it that full facts have not been disclosed to public? Thank you for all the info. Wake up mainstream media. Well, I cannot say what point of the investigation has been revealed or not revealed because I'm not a part of that team. But what I do know is that there are certain questions on the terror attack that still remain unanswered. And I'll give you one to leave you with, Ranga, is how did those terrorists who came via a dingy get off at the particular location at Kolaba, manage to synchronize their taxis in one of the most uh, busiest times and get into the taxis almost at the same time, unless they had local help. There had to have been local help, but that is for the investigative authorities to find out. There are many, many questions left unanswered of the terror attack. The Maldivian angle was something that was never even investigated. Mohammed Zilian did not come under the radar because after he provided the photographs, the video and the observations to LET, he had nothing to do with the attack. But the focus went on David Headley, which was right. But please understand, when you are planning to have a terror blast, or a terror attack in a place like India, you are not going to rely on one reconnaissance man. You will have more than one. We found the second guy. If there are more, we will find them as well. Next question, please. Kushanam Keshav wants to know, if Maldives had a hand in 1126, why is it that the BJP continued to have a diplomatic relationship with it? Should it have withdrawn all facilities given, being given to them? I am 100% sure nobody has even this within the previous government and even in this government is aware of the direct link of a Maldivian hand in the terror, terror attack of 26-11. Because I'm saying the terror attack that happened, Mahmoud Zillian's role was to provide the video, the photographs and the observations to LET and then he disappeared. Now, there are talks in the intelligence circles about where Mohammed Zillian is and what happened to his relationship with LET. But at this point of time, 
when India and Maldives is going through its own strain of relationships. The one question and the one point of contention for us as India must be the hand of Maldivian terror operatives on the terror attack that happened on 26-11 and their continuous focus on India. As you would found out on the last week of September when Mahmoud Shanawaz was arrested and he was indoctrinated by a Maldivian ISIS operator. Next question, please. Mr. Lee wants to know, if I'm not mistaken, Maldivian nationals were involved in the ISRO spying case in the 90s. The Pakistani handlers were controlling them from Colombo. Yes, that's correct. Next one, please. A learn addict wants to know, Savio, as government is bringing Agnivir approach, do you see it can be a challenge where community-centric Indian citizens can be exploited or brainwashed by external threats? I actually don't have an answer to that because uh, I think anyone who joins the Agniweed program, for whatever I understand of it, will be committed to India. So I don't think it's got anything to do with a community or or uh, or, or a caste of people. I think it's got to do with people who are nationalistic in their approach, wanting to serve the country. Yes, indeed. And I think that brings us to a close of all our questions today. Savio, thank you so much for coming at such short notice. We decided like less than 12 hours ago that we're going to do this program because of all the revelations and, and more power to you, bro. And we'll be back again with Savio. Thank as you. This, this, is, this is hardly the end of the story. This is just part three. There's going to be more because they are not understanding the gravity of the situation. In my opinion, India has been very mature in its handling of Mauritius. It, it needs to see the same reciprocation from the other side. We'll wait and see what happens. Thanks once again, Savio. Namaskar. Welcome. Namaskar. Thank <music> you.